So when we seek God with our whole heart, we are going to seek him with a singleness of purpose. It's not trying to seek God and trying to watch tombstone territory. Did y'all hear that laugh? It's not time to seek God and watch Perry Mason, Beverly Hillbilly, dancing with the stars. When you're seeking God and got the TV on at the same time, you're not going to be in the will of God. You're not, you, you can't seek God surfing the internet. But you've got to seek God earnestly. And ask him, what are the plans you have for me? I'm going to get somebody before I get out of here because I, I feel you right now. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. See, I'm going to quote something to you. You remember this. We can frustrate God's plan through action or inaction. Well. We frustrate his plans through actions when we act on our own. We frustrate his plan to hand action when God motivates us to a course of action and we make excuses and don't act. Yes, Lord. Yes. If we prepare ourselves to carry out God's plan, if we seek him with our whole heart, nothing can stop those plans from being real life. <coughs> At least I hold you too long. So what is God's plan for you? Is it a plan of peace? Is it a plan of hope? Is it a plan of a great future? Then I can hear somebody saying, but Pastor Austin, you don't understand. I'm getting up there in age. And what possible plan could God have for somebody like me? Well, most of us here today are under 80 years old, except mother. And, but at 80 years old, God had a plan for a man by the name of Moses to lead his people. Moses was a murderer. Moses was a man in hiding. But God had a plan. Yes, he did. Moses was used by God mm -hmm. over the next 40 years to bring God's people out. Yes, he did. And people might look at you and people might think you can't cut it anymore. No, I, I can't, I can't do the electric slide. I can't even do the twist. But I sure can walk for the Lord. Right. People might say you, you, you are limited in the things that you can do. People might say that you are not associated with the right circle. People might say, I really can't stand you. But baby, let me let you know something. God got a plan for you. Yes, Lord. People might say, you just don't fit in. Mm -hmm. But God got a plan for you. Yes, he yeah. has. So what is God's plan, Pastor? A man by the name of Paul might have thought that he was doing all right by persecuting God's people. Yes, Lord. Y'all know the story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But God had a plan for him. Yeah. Paul, who was called Saul, mm -hmm. had no thought in his mind of ever becoming a Christian. That was the furthest thing from his mind. Mm -hmm. He never dreamed one day that, that he was switched sides. He never dreamed that God would use somebody like him. I want somebody to know today that when God has a plan for your life, God will do whatever it takes to fulfill that plan in your life. Okay. Yes, sir. It might mean that he got to put you on your back in a hospital for a while. Amen. It might mean that he got to take you through some financial crisis. Yes, sir. It might mean that he got to take you through some hard times. Mm -hmm. It might mean that he just got to slap you upside your noggin and get your attention. No doubt. And it's possible, but man, that Paul, Paul, and Paul had known mm -hmm. what God was planning.
granted to do. As he traveled at the master's road, yes, he might have taken the matters into his own hand and went a different way. Yes, right. But God had a plan. Yes, All right. God met Paul. Yes, Lord. As Paul was doing his own thing mm -hmm. and his life was not the same. No, right. no, no. I'm going to talk to anybody today. Yes, Lord. As I close, let me tell you. What is God's plan for you? A lady by the name of Rebecca Joy. I'm going to share a righteous lady's name now. Don't you look at her. That's, that's, a, that's a good Bible study. Rebecca Joy wrote a book about the plans of God and the life of a Christian. Rebecca Jordan said that there's five steps to discover God's plans for your life. Step number one, she said, ask. You want wisdom? Ask. God for that. And most of us, I would say, have a tendency to figure things on our own. But when you read James 1, 5, and 6, it says, seek wisdom. Second thing, Ms. Jordan says, be faithful where you are. God will not give you greater opportunities or responsibilities if you are faithful with what he's already entrusted Amen. you in the small areas of your life. Amen. Serve him cheerfully. Yes, sir. All right. Serve him gratefully. Mm -hmm. Serve him faithfully. And wherever you are, no matter what your life and lot may be right now, you serve him. Then she said, listen, continue to study and pray. Then she says, wait. And oh my God, waiting is not always easy. Many of us who are Christians don't like to wait. We want things to be in a hurry. We want to have what we need to have right now, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, but right now. Mm -hmm. And the last thing Ms. Jordan said, obey. That means you got to stop doing what you want to do and do what things God say to you. All right. Do I need to say it again? You have to stop doing things the way you want to do. Amen, sir. And do things the way God said ought to do. Okay. All right. And maybe right now, yes, Lord. you're going through your testing time. Mm -hmm. And in your testing time, yeah. God got a plan. Come on, Emil. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the plan God has for you. It's a good plan. How do you know it's a good plan, Pastor? Because God's plans are always good. Yes, yes. Maybe for you some things seem hopeless. But even in your hopelessness, God has a plan for you. Yes, it's a plan of hope. Mm -hmm. In your eyes, Joseph, the future may look bleak. May not look so good. But God has a plan for you. And it's a plan of a great future. God's people was in captivity for 70 years. But God said after 70 years, we'll accomplish, he would come back, he would visit them. Y'all know that, don't you? Because he knew and he knows the plan he had for them. And today, God speaks to you. And he's speaking to me. He's speaking to us right now, where we are. He speaks to us in our circumstances. He speaks to us loud and clear. And here's his word. Yes, For I know the plans I have for you, the plans to love, plans to prosper, not to harm you, plans to give you hope right. and a future. Right. Then you'll call upon me. Come and pray to me. Yes, Lord. I'll listen to you. Mm -hmm. You'll seek me. You'll find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Your hope is in God. 
Your future is in God. Amen. Your peace yes, Lord. is in God. Amen. I need to tell you, he loved us. Yes, he because he gave us somebody who lived for peace. He gave us somebody who died for us. He gave us somebody who was buried in a bar for three days. Amen. 